Welcome to the Speak Your Success podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and this is a Speak Your Success media production. I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest. She's been an athlete advocate for over 17 years to thousands of athletes across high school, collegiate, and professional levels. As an athlete's readiness strategist and consultant, her mission is to enhance the marketability of athletes, sports organizations, and entrepreneurs through evidence-based programming, professional development, and strategic positioning and partnerships. Her motto is no athlete left behind. Without further ado, I welcome Dr. Tawana Smith to the Speak Your Success podcast. Dr. Smith, Dr. Smith, glad, glad to have you uh, on Speak Your Success. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to have, so glad to be here. Excellent. Excellent. So we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and dive in. And um, the, the first question I have for you is what does it mean to be an athlete readiness coach and how do you help athletes ultimately prepare both physically and for the mental demands of their sport? Yeah. Uh, so it's exactly what it, what it says, right? I ensure that athletes are ready for the various transitions that they go through throughout their sports journeys, right? Oftentimes when we think of transition, we simply think of out of sport, like when they're done playing, uh, but they're always in transition in multiple facets of their lives. And I like to ensure that regardless of the outer performance, right? Because most times that's kind of how we judge our success. Internally, it matches, right? You have the confidence, you have the direction, you have the clarity about what your next steps are outside of the game. And so uh, instead of just looking at the, the accolades and those types of things, I like to ensure that they feel ready uh, to transition throughout their journeys. Excellent, excellent. And in, 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 your, in your experience, uh, what would you say are some of the most overlooked aspects of an athlete's readiness and, and how do you address those challenges with your clients? Because just like we talked about in the intro, you know, about uh, the different athletes you've worked with at different levels and different organizations. Can you talk just a little bit more about how you address those challenges with those individuals? Yeah, the main issue is confidence in something other than sport, right? We have been conditioned for a very long time through our training and the amount of time that we spend in our sport. And there's no reason for us not to be great when you put in that type of preparation over an extended period of time. But when we talk about applying those skills and other aspects, uh, practice is the thing in our world that makes perfect. And so communication skills, uh, creating their own mission statements, charting out through concept and mind mapping and some other scientific techniques that I utilize with them to help them visualize, right? Same way we do in sport. Uh, and we have kind of our game plan up on the whiteboard. You need to have your life plan charted out in that same manner. And I take my athletes through exercises to help them gain confidence in those areas. And, and we, we, we talked about, um, or earlier, just in your, intro, in, in your introduction, uh, with, with you having uh, professional basketball in your in your background, so I want to hear what. Well, okay, so uh, I'm just gonna go straight to the question, Doctor T. <laughs> Transitioning from <laughs> professional sports to the business side of the industry, what skills have you found most transferable, and what new skills did you feel that you needed to develop? Yeah, critical thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking. Right. We have to process uh, an immense amount of information and make quick decisions. Right. Uh, we do that for a living when we, we play sports. And as a former professional basketball player, I know that full well. The thing that I had to do, though, because that can be a good and bad thing. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're making quick decisions and you're impulsive. I, I started in the business as a financial advisor. That's not so good when it comes to money, right? When you're just super <laughs> impulsive with your spending. Um, and so finding that mix uh, between uh, when to act quickly, uh, when to sit on it a little bit, and just really disciplining yourself and your emotions. The same things that make us great athletes oftentimes work against us in other areas of life. And so just the, the discipline, right, is the thing I have to learn as a professional in the business. And it's something that I have to teach my clients as well as they navigate their own journeys. Mm, I like that. Discipline, discipline is one of those interesting words because, you know, sometimes uh, discipline, <laughs> we have a negative connotation to it, but other times, you know, just like you talked about with finance, discipline with a budget, and then you, you know, you can yeah. do what you want to do at the end of the month because you got extra money to splurge. So it's one of those fun words. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun, and you know, synonyms, uh, focus, 
right? Mm -hmm. Focus in athlete terms. We understand what that means when you have to kind of block out distractions and stay on task, right? Focus. Uh, it's the same thing when it comes to your life plan. All right. Well, keep, keep it, keeping that focus around the word focus. Uh, what advice would you give to other athletes who are looking to leverage their sports career into potential business opportunities? Yeah, you need an amazing team. You need folks who are loyal that you can trust. You need folks who have some experience in this business or in the particular um, area that you are, are utilizing their help for. Maybe it's financial. Maybe they just have a great uh, skill in just managing and juggling things for you. The thing that we don't talk about often when we talk about athletes being more than athletes, right, is that uh, they have a ton of responsibilities, right? Being an athlete itself is a full-time job. So where does the time come from to indulge in all these different areas when you're running a business enterprise, right? You need people, you need a team in order to do those things effectively. And so I suggest even now at the high school level, right? Cause it's a business then, get you some good folks around you, get you some mentors so you can learn the game while you're playing the game. Mm, I like that, Mentor, mentors are so essential. Yes, and you can have many, you can have many mentors in different areas, so. This is true. Yeah. Well, I mean, one, one, one of your roles, uh, I'm going to double and say it, it is as a mentor. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about you being a being a collegiate uh, collegiate professor. And I want to I want to yeah. spend a little bit of time there and talk, talk a little bit about uh, you as a collegiate professor. And, and as a collegiate professor, how do you ultimately integrate your experience as a former professional athlete into the classroom? Yeah. So you, it's credibility, right? Uh, I am able to make the solid connection between things that I encountered, the way that I approach things and I thought about things from a sport perspective, which is this entity in a sense that unites us. People get it. It's easily understandable, right? Because sports is one of those things that brings us together and most of the time brings out the best in us. And so I use a lot of examples from my playing days, but also from my management days where I'm able to give a different perspective of the game because now I'm on the other side of the ball, right? Uh, and so you know, going back to earn my doctorate and now being a professor at the University of Memphis, it helps me add a lot of credibility and really test a lot of my developmental processes, right? Uh, that I'm utilizing with my athletes in a more, a format that has a little bit more scholarship, right? Uh, so in my course, which is all about readiness, uh, transition readiness and professional development, I am able to implement experiential learning, hands-on, interactive, uh, you getting practice at these things that we expect you to be able to do once you leave the confines of your institution. Um, and it has been, I've, I've been able to teach this course for the last three semesters. They're expanding the course to add more students and make it mandated, right, to teach these soft skills. So it's been a great experience to be able to, to teach in this more formal manner, but also teach my athletes in real time. Mm, I love that. And as you all out there are watching in real time, if you have not hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit it. But we're going to come right back to hear more about Professor Dr. T in just a minute. What's going on, family? Look, my family in the DFW, I want to spotlight local businesses. Yes, yes, yes. I want to spotlight local businesses businesses in the dfw area and if you're interested in being spotlighted i'm not asking for you to pay nothing i'm not asking for a cost i want to make sure that people know about the dopest businesses in the dfw if you're ready and if you're serious and if you feel your business should be spotlighted dm me the word spotlight okay DM me the word spotlight. I'll give you the uh, form so you can talk about your business and tell us why you should be spotlighted on uh, on our network. All right. So just want to put that out there. And uh, if you know somebody who has a business, send this post to them so that they can do this. All right. All right. And we're back to hear more about Professor Dr. T. OK, <laughs> I like that. Professor Dr. T. I'm going to have to coin that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, got, got to put all the respect on it. You know what I'm saying, Dr. T? Right. Got to put all the respect on it. Yeah. All right. Yes, so um, 
just, just, just as we're, 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 we're still digging a little bit deeper uh, about you and the professor role that, that you have. Currently, you know, yeah. with you being boots on the ground and, you know, with you being in the classroom with these students on a daily, weekly, monthly and annual basis. Right. Um, yeah. you, you get an opportunity to see trends that everybody else in the outside world isn't privy to. So what trends do you see shaping the future of sports education and ultimately how are you preparing your students for that landscape? Yeah. So. You know, one thing is we learn about this newer generation of student, right, who likes to be and really needs to be in some ways. They need to be heard. Right. And this was the foundation of my research. Um, I have found that creating an environment of collaboration, uh, participative decision making. Right. And we see the same trends taking hold in sports where athletes are controlling their narrative. Uh, and owning their own story. I think that, you know, from a user experience, from a professional, from a fan experience, we have got to do a better job sort of bridging that gap of communication between the two sides of the coin. And I try to introduce that into my classroom, but also with my athletes. And when they are more engaged in those decision-making processes, they're more committed. Right. Uh, they listen, even though it's noisy, they listen better and they take hold to some of the things that are being shared with them. So I think that this idea of participative learning and participative decision making um, is going to be the key moving forward because we are dealing with a different generation of students. And athletes. I couldn't agree more different. And then it's, it's always funny because when people talk about. Uh, whatever generation we're typically in, you know, they're like, when I was when I was a kid, I didn't used to do X, Y, Z or and then. Yeah, I've, I've realized as I started to get older and I see the next generation coming under me. I have to watch myself. I have to watch my words. Dr. Yes, because I'm like, yes, oh, like, I want to say some things sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because I'd be seeing some of these babies and I'm like. Mm -mm. Yeah. Saying, I, I and I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to stay connected, though. Right. So I just recently turned 42. So excited. The 40s are so lit. OK, especially professionally, because I'm able to take all of the wisdom right that I've gained to this point and uh, apply it in real time. And it's so exciting. But I love to stay connected through, you know, even my children. I have a seven year old and a nine year old. Right. And they teach me so much about what's cool, which is important, right? Because if I am communicating, engaging, trying to hold their attention and get these young people to listen, even young adults, right? I have to be able to speak the language, right? True. You talk about building trust, you talk about loyalty, right? That is an important component of that relationship. And we've got to all do a better job of doing our part. I get that. I get that. All right. So, so talking about communication and uh, building trust and everything like that, you as a speaker, Dr. T, because I know this, this is this is how we connected. I saw I saw a flyer of you speaking somewhere, uh, doing yeah. doing some presentation about something. Because you know I don't know how you keep track because it's just so many flyers. <laughs> but uh, I mean you yeah. you've you've inspired so many people with your journey, and and I'm just curious to know what has been one of the most memorable moments of impact within your speaking career. Yeah. Um... There have been many, right, from uh, young student athletes, and, and I do work at the high school level through programming uh, throughout the semesters. I do work at the collegiate level. In addition, like you say, to teaching, I do travel around and I speak uh, to different collegiate student athlete bodies uh, around their my Say just recently, um, a few months ago, I had an opportunity to visit the University of Missouri. And uh, after delivering this um, talk and going through this experience with these young people as they prepare to go to their career fair and sell themselves confidently to all the employer employers who were there uh, to hopefully hire them, I had this young lady approach me and it was so inspiring, right? Because as you may know, as a speaker, oftentimes when you are in the groove, when you're on stage or in your flow, you almost get into another zone, right? Um, and so after, you know, they dispersed, this young lady approached me and she was 6'4", six, 6'5", six, so I love that. I'm 6'1", so I always love my tall girls. Um, 
had a story for another day, right? On how I learned to be confident as a tall, tall girl, right? And she was so beautiful. And she said, oh my gosh, you are so beautiful. Like you really, I felt like you were speaking to me and you were inspirational because you are a black woman who is a doctor. And I have never in my life seen a black woman who is a doctor in real life, right? And so, you know, my doctorate was the last thing on my mind, right? As I completed this experience, like I wanted to watch them walk into their situation confidently, but here's a young lady that my mere existence, right? I didn't have to say a word, but walking in, right? With earning that particular credential, says something to this young lady and I literally started tearing up. <laughs> started tearing up in that moment because I felt for the first time what representation felt like and why that is so important for inspiring other people. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah I mean I, I really I really I really love to love to hear that and you know especially that connection you had with that young lady. Uh, because you know who knows where she's going to end up, what she's going to become. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's a pivotal role that, that you played in her journey just by giving her the gift of presence. So that, that's, yeah. that, I mean, that's, 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 that's really awesome. And, and, and yeah. just thinking about, um, you know, typically as you go into uh, these experiences, if it be that one or, or any other one, right, what would you say that when people leave, what, what would you just hope is the biggest thing that they take away from any experience with Dr. Tawana Smith? Yeah, I hope that they take away belief in themselves, right? That they can do whatever I shared with them, right? I don't always like to focus on the what so much because oftentimes young, i mean even we i know right like i'm on this never ending weight loss journey okay so i know what i need to do right um <laughs> it's the how to do it and it's the truly believing and having faith that i can accomplish those things right um as i mentioned i speak to high school student athletes uh, often right and i've had some share with me in full disclosure that they didn't really see very much in their futures uh, just because of the way they're raised their environment and they don't they're, they're done dreaming right this is it hmm. if i can walk away having helped that light switch come on right having planted a seed that someone else can come along and flip that light switch on that you keep dreaming, but believing, right, what you're dreaming, that it can actually come to pass. Um, I feel like, you know, the Lord has used me in the way that I'm supposed to be used in that situation. Wow. Hope. We can never, we can never give up hope. You can never give up hope. Mm. Never give up hope and we're never going to stop dreaming. But we're going to be right yes. back in just one second so we can hear yes. more about Dr. T's dreams that came into reality. Yes. What's going on, family? Had to interrupt the episode just to make sure that as you're watching this content right here, you want to make sure that you hit the Speak Your Success Media subscribe button. All right. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to smash that subscribe button so you can get updates on all the content as soon as we roll out for all our shows. All right. So for, that's for Speak Your Success and beyond the ball because we're hitting you every single monday and every single thursday with that content so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any updates and exclusive footage all right back to the episode all right and we're back we're back to hear more about dr t um so dr t you you've written a best-selling book and the book is entitled all right the book is entitled surviving the lights a professional athlete's playbook to avoiding the curse and plan two, guiding your athlete to wealth and the best mental health. And, yes. you know, by, by putting out a best-selling book, that, that, that's no small feat. Right, getting the book written, okay? <laughs> you got to get it written and yeah. then go through the process. So, you know, kudos, kudos to you for that. Uh, what you. was your inspiration behind it to really push, to really get this thing out? Uh, and, you know, why was it so necessary for that book to come out when you put it out? Yeah. Part of it was just just the natural progression of my own journey, right? I can only serve so many athletes one to one in my team, right? But after having so many players reach out to me, even those at the pro level, they'll go to rookie symposiums and they'll come back with this folder full of information like, "T, can you break this down? Can you explain it? I don't understand. They said a whole lot of stuff. It was overwhelming." 
I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm hearing that over and over. And if you're listening to our leagues and institutions, they are giving them information, but there's this, you know, you're dumping too much at one time and they don't really understand, especially because these things you're talking about don't match their lived experiences, particularly around money. Mm. So my thought process around the book was let's get something in the hands of these families because they go pro too, right? Mm. Uh, and many of our young athletes to get them thinking about all of the non-sport aspects that come along with this journey, right? You ask any kid when they're young, you know, most of them, what do you want to do? I want to be this pro player, right? right? But you're also becoming a business person. You're also becoming a professional, right? Not just an athlete. And so in my first book, Surviving the Lights, I wanted to expose them to some of the things that I saw athletes struggle with whether it's the way you start your legacy, nonprofits, your community service, your image, the people you have around you. How do you even choose an agent? Um, how do you, you know, what are some proactive ways you can take care of your mental health? What are some financial things you need to start learning about now? So the book is a very easy read um, and I use it in a lot of my high school programming partnerships to get these young people to start thinking about these things that will help them in life as well, but that will prepare them to be pros and not just athletes who are paid, right? Um, gotten it into thousands and thousands of, of families and athletes' hands, very proud of that. But then I began to shift my focus with my second book to those individuals like myself who serve as the support systems for these athletes, right? Advisors, counselors, coaches, mentors, even agents and parents. There is no training manual for how you support an athlete. However, all of those individuals I just named are some of the most influential people in their lives, right? And so I wanted to put together this, this really quick guidebook on some of the ways that we can be more effective and efficient in our support for these elite athletes, no matter the level. And I'm very excited because once I put this book out, NIL was becoming a thing. And that's really all I talk about is kind of, you know, determining your skills, your interests, your passions, practicing those things right now. You don't have to wait. Boom. Here comes NIL. And now kids are suddenly looking for ways to use their skills to earn money right now instead of waiting until they're done with the game. Um, and I also talk about mentorship because I'm really huge about that. So I wanted to provide a guide for the people who support athletes in hopes of, you know, making this process uh, have better outcomes for all. Certainly. And as, as we're thinking, thinking about better outcomes, NIL, what, 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 are your, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions around NIL? Because what, we're three, three years into it now, is it? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't really have a lot of direct predictions about NIL itself. I think that it is a great opportunity. However, I am always most passionate about the education and development that's needed to take advantage of that opportunity. More money is not the answer, right, to the long-term issues that we see our athletes dealing with. Like, it doesn't solve the depression. In some ways, it can make it worse, right? Because now you're exposed to a lot more distractions and pressures when dealing with these large sums of money and figuring out who you you can trust. Um, it doesn't stop you from going broke, right? We've seen, you know, uh, players in the NBA, $100 million players go broke. It doesn't stop it if you don't understand that that level of income is often not sustainable for the great majority of athletes throughout their lifetimes. Um, so we still have work to do in ensuring that we're meeting the education and development needs that goes along with these large bags of cash for these players to ensure that when they are a couple of years removed from the game, uh, that they're still healthy and successful and that that's not just a temporary fix. True, true. So looking back on your, your time as a, a professional athlete and, and your career, what would you say were some of the key moments that you feel shaped you as not only an athlete, but also as a person? Yeah. Uh, First and foremost, tearing my ACL in high school, right? One of the greatest experiences of my life. Uh, at the time, I didn't think so, right? I was obviously devastated to endure a season-ending injury. 
but it turned out to be one of the best experiences because it showed me in real time, you know, people can talk about things that may happen. And, you know, when you are an invincible team, you don't always take those things into true consideration, but having the game taken in that fashion, right. Gave me this reminder of how temporary it is, that it does have an expiration date and that I may not always know when that date is, right? So I had to be ready, right? You see the full circle moment, this concept of readiness, which has now become my life work, right? I had to be ready. And so I became this overachiever in everything. And my mom used to tell me all the time, you are the total package. So I didn't ever just want to be a successful athlete. I wanted to be a success which means that everything I touch, right? I felt like, you know, I should win uh, in that. And so that shaped the trajectory of my mindset around dealing with adversity, preparing for life outside the game, and just the resilience that you need to be successful as an entrepreneur. Um, I would say that that was by far one of the most impactful moments along my sports journey. Shout out to mom, a total package. I like Shout it. Out to mom, yes, yeah. plant the seed. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So with the with the the success that that you did have with with playing uh, professional professionally, and now, what would be some of the well well what's the direction that you see now with with women's basketball, right? And you know, is there any predictions you have for the future of women's basketball? I know we've been able to see you know some of the success as of late with Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, and you know we can go down the list of you know, some, some of the other more, more notable athletes, but what, yeah. what, what would you say you've seen from when you c competed versus now? Yeah. Uh, I would say that there is a lot more attention around the game. Um, it's the, the league has got to grow. The WNBA has got to grow, right? Uh, however, there is an entire world of basketball outside of the United States. Uh, and one of my clients, Sonny Weems, and I uh, literally – a month ago, uh, just launched the first ever business summit for these American athletes who play outside the United States because they don't have a home base. They don't have a players union uh, when they're playing in countries all around the world. And so um, as it becomes more global and the W keeps its permanence as the premier basketball destination for women's basketball, it's got to grow. We just need more teams. Like it's just we just need more teams and I'm happy to see those expansion efforts happen. And I hope that they continue and we accelerate them a little bit so we don't lose this momentum around the game, right? Mm. Um, one thing I will note though, uh, in addition to making it entertaining and you see all the storylines with, you know, the, the Angel Reese's of the world and the Caitlin Clark's and, and you know, the aces, right? And, and Aja's my girl, um, Asia, however I always mispronounce her name. Um, I hope that all of those storylines do not dilute the fact that those young ladies are hooping, all right? They playing some really, really good competitive basketball. And I hope that we don't lose focus on that uh, in this quest to kind of create this viral storyline that will get people watching, you know, to be entertained, but they won't turn into long-term fans. So, I'm with but you. they're hooping. Yeah, I'm, I'm they're hooping. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I mean, because at the end of the day, 20 points is 20 points. You still got to put the ball in the cup. Okay. Yeah. So, hooping is yeah. hooping. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. So I, I want to I wanna shift, shift gears a little bit. And Dr. T, you wear so many hats. Coach, yeah. manager, professor, speaker, best-selling author, and most importantly, mom. Uh, how, how, do you balance, how do you balance these roles and, and what drives your passion to excel? in such diverse areas? Yeah, my faith, right? My faith and obviously having two little people uh, watching your every move, learning and soaking up so much from you uh, is, is key, right? And, and I just had the same experience with my parents, uh, but I, it all goes back to my faith. I am a strong believer that we all have gifts and talents that we must share with the world, right? The things that you excel in and come naturally to you will be very different than those things for me, which is why it's so important for each athlete to find their happy space, right? Everybody doesn't have to do the same thing. Um, in that, yes, I wear a lot of hats and people ask me this all the time. Once I changed my approach mentally to that, that, you know, these, a lot of these things are things that I am purposed to do, 
right? And I like to think I live a very purpose-filled life. And so I approach that with joy. Um, I don't feel like I'm working because I do something I love and it comes naturally. But I just pray for strength. Uh, I get my rest. I am becoming a lot better about being present in the moments that I am, you know, outside of work or outside of those responsibilities so that I am recharged to get back in the game when it's time to handle business. Uh, but I have to attribute it all to my faith. I'm very blessed and I'm very grateful to do this work. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. If you could give one piece of advice to a young young lady who sees you, they're inspired by you, they're encouraged by the journey, just like that one young lady said, wow, you know, just to see you as Dr. T. What advice would you give to that, to that young lady uh, who's aspiring to follow in your footsteps? Yes, run your race boldly, right? Run your race boldly, try it. You may find out that it's not a fit for you and your skill set, and that's okay. It's okay to pivot, right? I'm 42 and probably about to make a, a small pivot in some areas as well. Uh, but run your race. Whatever is for you will find you, and your gift will make room for you. So run your race. Run your race. I love run it. Your I race. love it. Well, Dr. T, thank you so much for your time. Can you please uh, let all the listeners know where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you? Yes, you can visit my website for all things Dr. T. It's tawanasmith.com and uh, follow me on Instagram and LinkedIn, right? I'm trying to be a lot more active on LinkedIn and it's Dr. Tawana Smith on both of those platforms. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, uh, just like I said before, Dr. T, thank you for taking the time to, you know, grace the stage with us and, and, and stop by. And to all of our listeners out there and, and watching out there, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on our channel, Speak Your Success Media. Uh, but until next time, speak your success, believe in your greatness, and continue to create the life and business of your dreams. Why would you and why should you live any other way?